Howdy y'all, it's Chris with Show Fitness, your favorite chair in the belt buckle. Today we're going to be helping a 350 pound baseball athlete get into a better condition for the summer. Before we do that though, make sure to follow us on Instagram and YouTube. If you want to become a great trainer, it's going to show up down here in San Diego, early December, Los Angeles, early January 2020. If you want to be successful long term, internships over certifications. How can you expect to be a great trainer by reading a freaking textbook? It blows my mind. That's why so many trainers quit today. It's because they don't go through an internship, they don't learn by doing, they don't practice what they preach. So does help you. All right, so here is our body mass equation. We have a 350 pound athlete, and this is what I would do if I was consulting with the individual. Calories in versus calories out. I'm sorry, don't get your panties, don't get your jock strap into a bundle. It is what it is. Law of thermodynamic states, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. You got the hormone group, it's all about hormones. Calories, make fun of them and say it's not about hormones, it's about calories. You go back and forth and I feel for the clients because we're not helping you. You're confused. At the end of the day, you want to get in the best shape that you can for your baseball season. So let us help you. You got to take a look at this body mass equation. Not confused with BMI, which is body mass index. That's not optimal. It's not taking into consideration muscle math, mass as an athlete. That really doesn't apply to you. So we got to take a look at the body mass equation, which is calories in and calories out. That is a portion of it. But we also need to look at hydration. Are you thirsty? The moment you're thirsty, you're about 2% dehydrated. So as a 200 pound athlete, that's four pounds of water. As a 350 pound athlete, that's seven pounds of water that's out of your body. We gotta drink more water. Gatorade, that's calories. Drink more water to make sure you're hydrated. Hydration is so important. Sleep, if you're not sleeping at least six hours, everything else is gonna be jacked up. Your mindset, which is the next one, positive fucking mindset. I like the F to throw a little flavor in there. If that offends you, just mute it. Positive mindset. So if your mindset is jacked up and your hydration is, you're gonna see that a lot of this, these other factors are gonna mess with your long-term goal. All right, so mindset is really, really important and it can be altered from sleep. Let's get down to the bottom level. We have genetics. I'm not talking about your ectomorph and your endomorph and all that stuff. It's been debunked. I'm talking if your dad is the rock, you have better genetics than me. <laughs> if you are a Pacific Islander, is that it's gonna be harder for you to be a runway model. You gotta look at what your long-term goals are, and at the end of the day, get mad at mom and dad, but genetics do play a huge role. Metabolic disease, type one, type two diabetes, renal problem, liver problem, uh, thyroid problem. You do not have a thyroid problem if you go into the Google machine and type in, I can't lose weight, what's the matter? And it says you have a thyroid problem. You need to go to a doctor. I love working with metabolic disease because I don't do anything. I refer them out as trainers, we get to know our role. And I'm gonna still go work with a registered dietitian, go work with a physician. Whatever they tell me to do, I will do. I'm not talking about nutrition though. I can take you through a workout once we get medical clearance. My favorite, alcohol. Sneaky one because this is one of the four macronutrients. Carbs, fats, and proteins are the ones we're most familiar with, but one gram of alcohol is seven calories. These are sneaky hidden calories because you can have a beer 150 calories later, you don't really realize it. Liquid calories messes with your sleep. That's my big problem with drinking a lot. So when you have three, four beers and you accumulate blood alcohol content, you can't get into deep sleep. What's the likelihood of you working out the next day if you're hungover because you're dehydrated? Your mindset now is all jacked up. And when it comes to calories, you think you're gonna have a broccoli sandwich? I don't even know if that's a thing. It's probably gonna be one soon. But you're gonna go to Taco Bell. You're gonna go to In-N-Out. You're gonna probably choose foods that aren't the best for you. Stress. How do you handle stress at work? If you're a binge eater, We'll address words here in a second, but how do you handle stress? It's really, really important to take a look at. And then we have hunger and hormones. Hunger is an amazing thing. When you're hungry, it means you're burning fat. It doesn't mean you need to go eat. We misconstrue physiological hunger and psychological hunger. Oh, it's 12 o'clock, I gotta go eat. No, it's not, you're fine. Chill out, that's why fasting has taken a huge thing. If you don't eat one of the meals, you're probably gonna lose weight. We gotta be more in tune with our physiological hunger. I challenge everyone to fast one day. 18 hours, 16 hours, go a whole day, 24. You won't die, you're okay. You're not eating as much, you're gonna lose weight. And then what we need to do is educate you. So this is one of my buddies from UConn, his brother, he's playing D1 baseball and he wants to take his game to the next level. All right, so this is for you, Austin. I could do some calculations and write out what your BMR is, 
total daily energy expenditure, that's gonna be your calories in, basal metabolic rate, activity factor, thermal effect of food, which can be increased by eating more protein and fiber, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which we'll talk here in a second. But I don't want you to get freaked out about calories. What I want you to do is focus on training more. All right, so you're an athlete. How many games wins the World Series? Seven. If you lose the first one, doesn't matter. Second one, doesn't matter. Third one, doesn't matter. If you go down 0-3, you can still win the series. We got to take that approach with exercise. I want you lifting four days with weights. Upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body. On a leg day, like a trap bar, three by 15, step ups, wanna throw a curl in there, sure. Let's do a goblet squat, some side band walks for strengthening your glute med, your frontal plane. Do that on day one, day two, upper body. Choose two chest exercises. Push up and a cable row. Back, do a bent over row, and then a dumbbell row. And then for shoulders, military press, landmine press. Three, sets of 15, two exercises per muscle group, and then on the next workout, day three, go back to legs. Four workouts is what I'm challenging for. So if you were to do four workouts per week for a month, that's 16 workouts. 16 times 12, that's 192 workouts. Now my question is, which one of those workouts defined you? Not a single one, it's less than a percent of the overall being. So you gotta focus on long-term sustainability and not beat yourself up if you miss one workout. It doesn't matter. What's the most important workout is the next one. And if, you, if you're not 100%, doesn't mean you should just quit. Go in there and do it 70% of what you're normal, what you're capable of. That's fine, as long as you're working out four days. My next challenge for you, you're an athlete, so you like to be challenged. Every single day up your knee, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. What that means is walk an hour. Watch some of our YouTube. Learn more about total daily energy expenditure. Send me a message. I'll, I'll actually do a, an exact calculation for calories if you want your macro broke down. Sure, we can do all that stuff. But this is one of the easier things to adjust. If you were to walk an hour every single day, don't skip a day. Do that every day for the next 60 days. Week, you probably lose two or three pounds a month. You're looking at eight to 10 pounds. 15 to 20 pounds in 60 days, easy. So you're 350, you're gonna be closer to 330, and then on top of that, you throw in your workouts four times a week, you could be dropping 20, 30 pounds in the next couple months, easy. Don't get fixated on the number though, they say about a percent of body, of body weight, so you know, maybe three and a half pounds per week. Don't get hyper-focused, I want you to get hyper-focused on the workouts. So as a coach and a trainer, and what I tell our students here, I focus on the workouts. Because the workouts have a direct correlation with your mindset. When you go set a PR, think about this as a baseball game. If you gun out a guy from the outfield, coming in around in third, and you got him out, you feel amazing. You get a little smirk on your face, you feel awesome. That's what you get from lifting weights. You don't get that with dieting. Most people beat themselves up and they have a really negative approach when it comes to nutrition. So I like to take the approach, exercise. Well, it's 80% of fat loss is nutrition. Find me that, that statistic, please. Where do we come up with that? We like to hear a statistic. You know, 62% of statistics are wrong 28% of the time. We can make up numbers all day long. It doesn't mean it's right. I'm at the opposite, the antithesis of that percentage. I disagree with that so much. If you were to exercise regularly, increase your knee, your mindset's gonna change. Everything about this is going to change. But if you want to get into nutrition, here's my problem. So let's take a look at this. Why are we so crazy? I know it's a bad word, but let's take a look at this, all right? Imagine we're back in school. You're in college right now, so we have 10 quizzes. You get a 10. Great job. A 7. Ah, it's still good. 10. Great job. 9. Great job. 10. Great job. 3. Ooh, terrible. You continue on, though. You get an 8. You get a 6. You get a 9 and a 10. Out of those 10 quizzes, a couple of them weren't the best, but overall your score is an 82. You will pass with flying colors. You have a B minus, maybe even a B if you flirt with the teacher a little bit. You did great, but why is it with nutrition we take this approach, great, 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 you got that three, then all of a sudden, four, a two, a one, a three, you just bomb the rest of them. Now put yourself in that environment where if you were to get a three, what's the logical response? You, you, you reflect, right? So why did I get a three? Did I study optimally? Did I ask for help? Did I read the chapters? Did I study two or three hours? Did I get enough sleep? Maybe I was partying too much. We reflect to analyze why we got that three. We don't do that with nutrition. 
What we do is we beat ourselves up. You got a three, and then you let the rest of the week suffer. I had a burger, which is bad. It's a cheat meal. Cheating is a terrible word. Look at our video on the three words we should eliminate. Weak-minded, cheating, bad. We got to eliminate that stuff. There's nothing wrong with food or a burger or french fries or pizza or alcohol. It's fine. It's when you have too much of it and you don't exercise and your sleeping gets jacked up and you let it cascade. It's a snowball effect. So if you take this approach with nutrition where you have a burger, that's fine. It's fuel for performance. So a great coach is going to work with your mindset and educate you that there's no such thing as good or bad. I don't want you to look at white bread as bad or brown rice as better. No, it's fuel. How are your workouts? These four workouts, were you in there like dragging ass? Well, what time are you working out? How's your sleep? How's your stress? Yeah, you're going to have a little bit of, de of decrease in energy because your output's going to go higher. It's all right. Expect it. It's part of the game. We need to eliminate this negative mentality with dieting where you have one bad food or meal and it offsets the rest of the week. When we talk about show fitness, 18 out of 21 need to primarily be protein, vegetables, and fruits. 18 out of 21. You have three meals a day, seven days, that's 21. 21 times four, 84 meals a month. Times that by 12, it's 1,008. One meal is less than 1%, less than 1%, it's actually 0.01 of the whole entire year. One meal does not define your physique as does one workout. It's your mindset and your behavior for the whole entire year. The best workout plan, hands down, is for one year, win the week, every single week, 52 weeks, four workouts. That's how you're going to succeed. So awesome, when it comes to the baseball season and you're implementing these four workouts, you're not just going to give up after that because then you're going to go back into your bad behavior. You're going to carry on. Talk to your strength coach. Talk with me. We will come up with a plan while you're in season. Still do with your walking. What's going to happen when you get down to 250, 275? You're going to be faster, more explosive, injury resilient as well. So there's so much good that can come from this when you take a broader perspective and not, I got to do keto because I need to lose weight fast. And this guy on Instagram shredded and he has abs. He doesn't have a cool belt buckle though. But he told me keto is the way to go. Or I got to go vegan because the movie Game Changers. Oh my God, I'm going to look like Arnold. No, you aren't. Vegan isn't the answer. Paleo isn't the answer. There's no specific diet that's the answer. It's a way. It's not the way. So I like to educate the masses. This E is huge. And take a look at everything. And see where you can make the biggest adjustment. And our belief at Shelf Fitness, it's working out. Focus on the patterns. Four days a week, increase your non-exercise activity, which is walking for an hour a day. And if you don't hit one of those, don't beat yourself up. Look at each week like it's a championship series. The more you know, internships over certifications. If you get your NASM, AFA, ACE, ISSA cert, the likelihood of you quitting within a year is going to be about 80 to 90%. Check out my book, How to Become a Successful Personal Trainer.